الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأفضل التسليم على سيدنا مولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور أبصارنا وبصائرنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I was told that I should explain a hadith about the shama'il of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi When you look at the shama'il of Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah I try to find a hadith that's most comprehensive about the shama'il. Shama'il means the characters, the looks of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa The only one I could find that's comprehensive and that's known is one that Imam Tirmidhi narrated in his book, Al-Shama'il, in four different areas. And I think that's the one we'll go through. So what I'll do is, because the hadith is extremely long, it's about two long pages, we'll go through it page, word per word, inshallah ta'ala, together, seeing what the awsaf, or what the characters and the looks of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi, and then we will take from them, obviously, when we talk about the Nabi Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, needless from me to remind you that you need to make as many salawat as you can, subdued and out loud when you hear his name and his awsaf and his shama and his character Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. This hadith is probably the longest in our traditions describing him as such. However, having said that, the Tirmidhi narrated it four times, Wul Hashim narrated it, Wul Bayhaqi narrated it, Wul Ahla bin Sa'ad, not Ahmed. But the hadith has an extremely weak sanad. In fact, Abu Dawood mentioned, Abu Ajri mentioned that on his behalf, that the sanad may, or some of the hadith may be even more old. So I am telling you this, so to take it with a grain of salt, However, while the Senate is very weak at best, not at least, at best very weak, with some of the alfaz of the hadith that are actually possibly maybe for, Allah knows best, the general meanings of the characters are correct. So we're separating the tra transmission as a transmission from the general characterization or the general description of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yeah? So I just wanted to make that I, I, Though Tirmidhi narrated in Shama, like I said, four times and uh, to me, I, it's, it's very weak It's extremely weak Ba'ifun jiddan Wallahu Wallahu Alam Like anyway, the full version of the hadith you'll see it in, you'll see it in the Tabarani's Marjah al Kabir. For those of you who are interested in the longest version, so I'm going to go through it. I'll say it in Arabic and then I'll translate it, and we'll see uh, the hadith that I like. I said is long, so um, we'll try to stop at some areas. And I entrust that all of you are scholars, Alhamdulillah, and you can you know deduce all kinds of meanings and all kinds of things. بسم الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله قال الطبراني وبإسنادنا إليه حدثنا إلى حد علي بن عبد العزيز إلى الطبراني قال حدثنا علي بن عبد العزيز حدثنا ثنا أبو غسان مالك بن إسماعيل نهدي ثنا جميع بن عمر بن عبد الرحمن العجلي قال حدثني رجل بمكة so this is the Sanad to Al-Tabarani, also the, almost the Sanad of Ishtirmidhi and all of them. It goes to a man called Umar ibn Abdul Aziz al-Ajli, Abd al-Rahman al-Ajli. Qal, he said, Haddathani rajulun bi Mecca. A man from Mecca told me. Had that man, we don't know who he is. Mubham. Mm. There's one problem in there. Another problem, even if you... An ibn Halatin, an ibn li Abi Hala. Through a man, a son of Ibn of, of Abi Hala. At-Taymi, at-Tamimi. Through Al Hassan bin Ali, through Imam Al Hassan bin Ali, he said allegedly. Imam Al Hassan said, "Qal, sa'al tu khali." I asked my uncle, and that would be obviously uh, maternal uncle, Hind bin Abi Halat al Tamimi. Oh, I asked my Khali Hind Abi Halat Tamimi, "Wakana wa Safan." I asked him. And he was good at describing. Wasaf means a man who 
you know, the Arabs at that time, they were accurate in their description. Some of them were, of course, that's what they, this is how they used to navigate through the desert. They observe. And, so this man, Hind bin Abi al Tamimi, was a describer. He was good at description. Hmm? And he was an expert at describing people. I asked him, عن حلية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حلية about the gentility of Rasulullah gentility of Rasulullah that's why many of the Alma they call this حديث الحلية right حلية means the حديث of the gentility of Rasulullah صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم so I asked him about this he says in Hassan supposedly said وَأَنَا أَشْتَهِي أَنْ يَصِفَ لِي مِنْهَا شَيْئًا أَتَعَلَّقُ بِهِ And I asked him, desiring that he describe something of it that would captivate me. Now, the scriber is expert at describing. Again, remember the Sanad, yeah, yeah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was many narrations that when a Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu missed, used to miss the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. After he passed away, they would look at Imam Hassan. Imam oh, Hassan, you don't have to ask anybody. You can just look in the mirror, you see Rasulullah. Oh, yeah, he looks, etc. Now, I know Hadith Sahih, Hadith has a Sahih Sanad, where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Al Hassan is from me. Huh? Hassan is from me. So, وحتى الصحابة رضي الله عنهم أجمعين when they used to describe the Imam Hassan, they say from top to here, the Imam Hassan is like Rasulullah. Saying is from the bottom down. صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So you see, and Imam Hassan does not need to ask him the Nabi. But if we take it like this, inshallah, we see the meanings are correct. Inshallah, Taala. So we will. Yeah, we will we will look at it and we will see the signs of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in there. Like like I said, a Sahaba when they used to miss the, the presence of Rasulullah, the physical presence presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of them, they would look at an Imam al-Hasan ibn Ali. Sallu alaihi wasallimu taslima hatta tana. صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما حتى تنال جنة ونعيما. If you want جنة you have to make صلاة. صلى الله عليه وسلم. I don't want you just hear it. I want you to say it so I can make money from you. Every time you say صلاة الله صلى الله عليه وسلم I told you I'm gonna make from you something. And you will benefit. صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما حتى تنال جنة you will get Jannah and Naeem. Allah will reward man yusalli maratan. If you only say it once, Allah will reward you what? Ashara. Wayabqa fi naeem muqima. And you'll always stay in Naeem. Whether the Naeem of the dunya or the Naeem of the Akhira. The more you say salah and salam on him, صلى الله عليه وسلم the more you are in Naeem صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويبقى في النعيم مقيما Al-Hasan said, I want, I asked him, so he described something to me that I can, that captivates me. So he said, فقال, Hind now is saying, قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فخما مفخما Look at this lafad, beautiful. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم was glory over glory. Or a glorified glory. How can glory already be glorified? I don't know. Glory of fakhm means glorified and mufakhman even more glorified as glory. Kana 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرة ويبقى في النعيم مقيما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فخما مفخما Glory over glory. يتلألأ وجهه تلألأ القمر ليلة البدر. Whose face shone with the radiance of the moon on the night of its fullness. That's how his face used to shine. صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. No wonder هذا حديث صحيح. You know it. حديث هذا صحيح سنة. أنا صلى الله عليه وسلم الترمذي نارته النادر في الصحيح. That when we entered Medina, Anas says, radiallahu anhu, everything was shining in Medina from Rasulullah. So here he's saying what? He's saying his face, whose face shone from shining with the radiance of the moon on the night of its fullness. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yatala'la' wajhuhu tala'lu' al-qamari laylat al-badr. Full moon. صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم نعم اطول من المربوع واقصر من المشدب يعني النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى وسلم he was taller than the average height and shorter than the slender height taller than the average shorter than the extreme height صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وسلم نعم عظيم الهامة رجل الشعب صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم His head was impressive and his hair was loose curly or loose curly صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله نعم قال إذا فرقت عقيصته فرق وإلا فلا يجاوز شعره شحمة أذنيه صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم. He said when his forelock grew long enough to part, he would part it. Otherwise, his hair would not cross his earlobes. صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم. إذا هو وفر وإذا هو وفرة أزهر اللون واسع الجبين. He was صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. He was bright of color, broad of forehead, bright of color. أزهر means from brightness. That's why we say الزهراء. فاطمة الزهراء. Blossoming, brightness. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أزهر. ها أزهر اللون. أزهر اللون. أزهر in color means like the flower that's blossoming and it's light in its blossoming. صلى الله تعالى وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. نعم. واسع الجبين. Broad forehead. You can see his honorable forehead. Broad. صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم. ترى there's another hadith that's صحيح. Not here, but that's صحيح. And the hadith says, if you see him, Abu Huraira was among the narrators and others, if you see him, you would see as if the sun is orbiting his forehead. Subhanallah. Here's a bonus on the side. Now can you see him? As if the sun is orbiting on his forehead. Subhanallah. As Harun Laun. He is bright. Subhanallah. But that bright is not about color. It's about the noor. Obviously, I don't have to tell you. There are people who are black, but nurani. And there are people who are white, but shaytani. It has nothing to do with this. It has to do with noor. Sah? Naam. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta tanalu jannatan wa naima.
صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أزج قال أزج الحواجب سوابغ في غير قرن صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم he said uh, he was bright of color bright of forehead endowed with arched eyebrows صلى الله عليه وسلم that were perfect without being conjoined ما الله made him في أحسن تقويم لقد خلقنا الإنسان في الإنسان الإنسان which means we have created the human being in the best of ways but who is the human being you can say we created خلقنا الإنسان we created the human being oh خلقنا الإنسان we created the human being the human that no other human is like. The human, the tarif here, or you can say jinns in the Arabic language, linguistically speaking, for those of you who are interested. Linguistically, you can خلقنا الإنسان. الإنسان species, all the insan, all the human being. We made them in the best of ways. صحيح. No problem. Sure. Allah created the human being in the best of statures, in the best of ways. Or لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ That special human being. That insan that no other insan is like in the best of ways. فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله Now, so he said, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم, he has, now قال له, أَزَجُّ الْحَوَاجِبِ سَوَابِغَ مِنْ غَيْرِ قَرَانِ His eyebrows are arched. That conjoined. Now, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, perfectly done so. With a vein between them, which anger accentuates. Huh? He says here, Lahu Nurun, or Afwan, as a Jahad, Bainahum Ayrqun Yadurruhu Ghadab. Between them, you would see a vein that's accentuated when he's angry, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. Point. Before going any further, you know that the Nabi Nawam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never got angry for himself or his own honor. He always got angry for the sake of Allah. In his own things, he always forgave. Idhabu fa antum mukhlaqa. Do you are free? Do the go? You are this. But he always was angry for the sake of Allah. When Allah's when the people's rights were violated, when these that's this is when the Nabi Adam was angered. And then when he was angered, he would see a vein being accentuated between his beautifully perfect eyebrows. Sallallahu alayhi wa Now Allah Allah Allah. And then after that he said the bridge between of uh, the bridge of his nose was aquiline. I mean, there is a, as if it's going almost straight, there's just a little, little, like, uh, little slight thing, but it's almost streamlined. His, his honorable, the bridge, the honorable bridge of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa almost straight, there's just a little, huh? aquiline, just almost straight like that, just a little bit. You see that, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, lahu nurun ya'lu, he says, Lahu nurun ya'luh means he has a light raised upon him. You look at him, there's a light always upon him. Maybe he says ya'luh, but maybe there, you can say, yani maybe there is a light emanating from him that it shines all around him. Maybe that way. يعني وذ النور أبصيره لكن إيه ولا هو نور نو بروبلم لا هو نور يعني لو بوث ويز لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ميد دعاء والله أز صحيح مسلم زد وجعلني نورا أو الله مكني نور يعني you know the hadith I don't have to tell you this نعم الله الله he said then he said له نور يعني يحسبه من يتأمله أشم Whoever does not know him, thinks, considers him haughty. Who doesn't know him, think, considers, thinks that he is so proud, so proud or full of pride. 
نعم كف اللحية سهل الخدين ضليع الفم أشنب he said he was thickly bearded his beard was thick sallallahu alayhi wa sallam endowed with smooth cheeks his honorable cheeks were smooth sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam with wide mouth this is the translation I bet you differ with the translation because when the Arabs say someone who's dali' al-fam dali' al-fam is a metaphor for someone who's an eloquent speaker but if you want to translate literally it would mean his, his honorable mouth was wide but the Arabs understand that as when he speaks he speaks clearly and eloquently <laughs> now then he says Muflaj al-Asnan which means he was obviously he says with what mouth with cleft teeth in fact it is not I don't know if it's cleft right but what it is is that he had a gap in the front of his teeth just like these teeth of mine if you can see there is a gap between this one and this one this is Rasulullah there was a gap in his front between his two front teeth sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam now daqeeq al-masruba and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a delicate strip of hair from the top of his honorable chest to his honorable navel very thin very thin thin line of hair دقيق المسربة كأن عنقه جيد الدمية دمية في صفاء الفضة. الله. It was as if his neck was the neck of a statue shaped in pure silver. صلى الله عليه وسلم. When this there is a hadith Abu Dawood if my memory doesn't fail me well now the hadith is Hasan I know the sign of the hadith is Hasan. It's either Abu Dawood or Tirmidhi narrated in Hadith al-Ju'rana. But anyway, كَأَنَّ عُنُقَهُ سَبِيكَةُ فِضَّةُ صلى الله عليه وسلم As if his neck, a piece of shining silver. صلى الله عليه وسلم So the, that's why I told you that the Sanad is very weak and maybe it's forged some of the Al-Fa'ad. لكن the meanings are corroborated by so many other either Hasan or Sahih Hadith. Now, so you see the Nur of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم as if his neck is what? A piece of shining pure gold, pure silver. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now, then he said, Mu'tadilu al-khalq, badinan mutamasikan sawa al-batni wa al-sadr. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his physique firmly cohesive with his stomach and breast proportioned. Yeah, you don't see this, huh? <coughs> his honorable chest and his honorable stomach proportioned. Sallallahu alayhi wa How can, see, I mean, he, number one, he ne ne almost never ate. When he ate Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa, Umm al-Mu'mineen radiyallahu anha wa radha, Siddiqa bin al-Siddiq, she says, sometimes a month hadith suhiha, a month goes by and nothing, we don't eat anything but water and dates. Sahaba radiyallahu anhum used to be hungry, they would, they would wear one stone, they would put one stone and wrap it to their belly. And one time they saw Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrapping two stones. Proportion. See, see the hari and see biryani and we dive. Bismillah. Bismillah ima jareha wa mursaha. And you don't come out unless you're done. One of, the, one of you is going to be done. Either you or the food. And no, it's a battle. Who's going to remain? You, we usually get victorious. We eat all the food. But we burn it. The problem is eat, burn it. La ilaha illallah. The problem is not just eating. The problem is burning the energy that we eat. Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam
His chest was wide, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was broad-shouldered, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Now, then he said, Bakhma al-karadisi anwar al-mutajarradi mawsoola ma bayna al-labbati wa al-surrati bi sha'rin yajri kal khatti aari thadiyayni wal batni mimma siwa thalik أشعر الذراعين والمنكبين وأعاد الصدر صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. He said he was broad shouldered endowed with stout limbs and radiant bare skin. صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was linked between the top of his chest and the navel by a strip of hair like a line of writing. While his chest, his honorable chest and honorable stomach were bare apart from that. He had hair on his arms and shoulders and on the upper parts of his chest. His forearms, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, were long and he had sensitive touch of the hand, sallallahu alayhi wa In the Arabic, the hadith, he said, uh, he said Look at what he said in English. Allah, his forearms and his were long, he had a sensitive touch of hand. If I just may stop here and you know, talk about, you know the hadith, the hadith Anas also, Sahih, inshaAllah ta'ala, he said that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he sent me in something, and I went, and uh, I, I forgot what he sent me for. I played with the three people playing, I played with them. He said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes after, he waited, waited for me, and, I totally forgot. And he put his hand behind me on my eyes. I didn't, so I don't know what this. He says what he did. I realized it from the beauty and the sensitive hands of Rasulullah. Then I remember, oh, I forgot he sent me to do something. But Anas said, by Allah, 10 years I served him. He never told me, why did you do this or why didn't you do this? I didn't hear one rough word one time in 10 years. The palms of his hands and the soles of his feet were thickest. His extremities were well formed. The hollows of his soul were arched. And his feet, his honorable feet, were so smooth that water beaded off of them. You put water, it beats off of them. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Naam. Allah, Allah, Allah. Yad masih al-qadamayni yanbu anhum al-ma. He uses masih al-qadamayn, the lafth of the hadith. Masih, you know we say Isa al-masih alayhi salam, right? Wipe. The wipe, masih. Wiped. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he talks, when the hymn says, he says, Masih al qadamayn, he had another day, and he in the common sense, his honorable feet were so smooth and wiped. So that if you put water, it just fluently and smoothly flows off of them, <coughs> on them. Ila zala zala qul'a. Depending on which one, يخطو تكفيا ويمشي هونا ذريع المش المشية إذا مشى كأنما ينحط من صبب 
وإذا التفت التفت جميعا خافض الطرف نظره إلى الأرض أطول من نظره إلى السماء جل نظره الملاحظة يسوق أصحابه يبدر من لقي بالسلام صلى الله عليه وسلم When he went away from a place he would go away striding decisively he's walking when he, he would tread in, as if he would tread inclining forward and walk comfortably his gait was brisk when he walked it was as though he was descending a decli declivity a declivity yani when he walks is as if he is what coming down from the top of the mountain you know how you walk like that descending decisively and when he faced anyone he would do so squarely he does not just turn his face to you yeah no 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 when he faces someone he turns his whole he faces you squarely sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam anyone not the important the children is only no 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 <laughs> or the chiefs or the people with the money no no everybody is the same to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna akramakum inda allah atqaakum the most honorable of you amongst you is the most the one who has most taqwa that's how it was rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he lowered his gaze yes and that Look at this. Yani as if you're reading about the Quran. Lower your Quran. You see Quran walking. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidah Aisha, Siddiq radiya Allah ta'ala, she says, when she was asked about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she says, He kana khuluquhu al-Quran. He was a walking Quran. Now you see why. He always lowered his gaze. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Then he said, his gaze at the earth was long. Than his gaze at the sky. Uh -huh. The majority of his gaze was peripheral. Most of his gaze was contemplation. Contemplation. <coughs> He would urge his companions to proceed ahead of him. Yasuku Ashaba. What does that mean? His companions walk in front of him, he walks in the back. You know why, right? Malaika are walking behind him. He told the Sahaba, I need I walk behind you because the Malaika are walking behind me. Yasuku Ashaba, as if he's leading his companions. Yeah, yeah, obviously, Sahaba of the Raman, all of them are honorable. Every one of them is honorable. But he is leading them. Yeah, and an the example is if you don't have Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're like a lost sheep. But he leads you, if he leads you, you're like a guided sheep. Yasuku <laughs> Ashaba. Look at that. He used to be a shepherd before. Huh? He knows what leadership is all about. Like, and this time is not like that in the sense. Because he says, leave my back, don't walk behind me. Leave my back free for the malaika because they're walking behind me. Oh. Don't think Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was walking by himself like that. So me and you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was aided by Jibreel and Mikail. The malaika were walking behind him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why he put his sahaba, yasuku huh? ashaba. He asked them to walk. Now proceed ahead of him. Then he said, he said, he would and he would surprise anyone he encountered with the salutation of peace. Oh. Oh, he doesn't wait for you to say it. He surprises you with it. Oh. As if he's already knowing, he's anticipating you. He already tells it to you right away. Before you even catch up to it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta Yani supposedly Imam al-Hasan is saying to Hind, the describer, Safli mantiqa. I asked, 
Ex describe to me the manner of the speech of Rasulullah. Subhanallah. How, how did he articulate himself? Look at this. He said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم متواصل الأحزان دائم الفكرة ليس ليست له راحة لا يتكلم في غير حاجة طويل السك سكة يفتتح الكلام ويختتمه بأشداقه ويتكلم بجوامع الكلم فصل لا فضول ولا تقصير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله. He said and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was constantly sympathetic with sorrows. دائما الأحزان. He was always in sorrow. In sorrow for what the hal of the ummah is, and what the hal of the ummah will be, and for the people who are suffering, because his the suffering of the people is dear to his heart. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He does not want people to suffer. He does not want people to go through difficulties. Allah tells us this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. La qadijaakum rasulun min anfusikum. حريص على عزيز حريص عليكم عزيز علي ما عندكم حريص عليكم difficult عزيز عليه difficult on his heart the difficulties he go through difficult دائما الأحزان حريص عليكم he cares about you genuinely cares about you doesn't want you to go through rough times doesn't want you to be this does want you to always be successful صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ها Therefore, when he described himself, Daim al Ahzan, his husn, his sadness and sorrow was always continuous. Because Ummati, Ummati, he's thinking of the Ummah, Ummati, Ummati, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Therefore, all the Anbiya, they asked Allah for their dua, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept spared his da'wah for the Day of Judgment, so he gives you the Shafa'a, Ummati, Ummati. Ya Rabbi, he says, Ya Rabbi. Everyone, all the prophets went and asked. He says, Ya Rab, I go on the Day of Judgment and I make sujood and I say, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati. Daim al Ahzan. He worries. He is in constant sorrow, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Persistent in thought. Thought. Look at that. Having no repose. Prolonged in silence. Presence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Presence with Allah. If you are present with some with, with an entity that's very that's that's very important I mean, for us, you don't worry about the entity that's less important. You don't occupy yourself with less. And Nabi Mustafa was always in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore his silence and contemplation and presence is much more than it is talking. He's not there to talk as much as he is there to absorb, absorb and observe. Absorb and observe. He's absorbing, absorbing all this noor that's coming onto him and observing this jalal of the presence that he's with. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would not speak unnecessarily. Look at this. Unnecessarily, he would not speak. Remember the hadith? Sahih hadith Bukhari. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir fal yakul khayran aw li asmat. If you believe in the day of judgment, in Allah, and the day of judgment, if you have something good to say, say it. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. Not to us. He, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obviously would not speak unnecessarily. You know how nowadays people, they speak when there is a need and when there is no need. You want to give them money to shut up? Hey, just take a break. You swallow, it, swallow the radio? Something. Man, to this word that you speak. You own your words as long as you have not spoken them. Once you speak your word, you no longer own it. It's either for you or against you in the Day of Judgment. As long as you have not said it, it's your word. 
Once you said it, once it's uttered, now your word is no longer for you. It's no longer your own. It's either will count for you or will count against you. Waihaka ya Mu'adh. He tells Sayyidina Mu'adh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sayyidina. Ya Mu'adh, don't you know what takes people, what makes people being dragged on their faces in Jahannam is the result of their tongue? Now, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to teach us, he would not speak unnecessarily. <coughs> he would introduce and conclude his speech with the name of Allah. <laughs> Always. He begins his speech and concludes his speech with the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because he never forgot Allah for a second. He was always in the presence of Allah. Huh? Even when he was in the valley of Mecca, he was in the presence of Allah. Subhanaka la ilaha illa. Subhanaka inni kuntu min Yunus, we bought the Hud. Yunus in the deep depth of the ocean, in the deep depth of the whale. He is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Anbiya are with Allah. It doesn't matter. High up, that's irrelevant. Now, now he says he begins, he would introduce and conclude his speech with the name of Allah. He would speak using simple words bearing many profound meanings. This is the beauty. Jawami al kalim Speaking simple words, bearing profound meanings. Have you, those of you who studied philosophy, I'm sure many of you are. I've studied philosophy. Sometimes you take these books of Kafka and Nietzsche and Descartes and Nicomachus, if you see his uh, will, or Aristotle, or, you know, Plato, etc., whatever. You need a channel, you need a dictionary just to understand what's going on. And some people, those people who, they like a taqa'ur, so we call it Arabic fil and hadith. And they come and they memorize a couple of vocabulary and they throw it at you like, see, I. Oh, you don't know what this means? Uh, uh, you need years to learn the language I know. <laughs> Some people say, oh, look, his language went over my head. I, I, you know? And Nabi Sallallahu was not like that. He did not want his language to go over the head of people. In fact, his language was the rain, like the rain. It went on to the people who know something, who know everything, and on to the people who don't know anything. Both benefited from it. Allah. It didn't go just over them and the people who don't know did not benefit. No, no, no. The Bedouin who does not know how to read or write and never read anything in his life, who was always, who was born and lived and will die between the camels in the, in the desert, he understood the words of Rasulullah and it transformed him and the most knowledgeable of the scholars listened to the words of Rasulullah and transformed him. That's the greatness of Rasulullah huh? Simple yet profound. And to don't try to challenge me with words that you just memorize in terms of come speak to me in the language I understand and the most sophisticated of scholars also understand. But everyone takes different depth from it. Allah Akbar. Huh? Mustafa. No, he was Nabi, Rasul, Habibullah. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima hatta tanalu jannatan wa na'ima. Allahu yajzi man yusalli maratan ashara. if you make more salawat than Rasulullah. Even if you're in the dunya, you'll be in Jannah. Try it. Your life is filled with the salah of Rasulullah. You are the na'im. He said, his speech was concise. خَيْرُ الْكَلَامِ مَا قَلَّ The best of talk is brief to the point. Concise. His speech was concise, neither excessive nor abridged. 
exactly what you need. Sure. Custom fit. So hard. Huh? It was neither. Compatible, يعني first one. La fudu wa la taqsir. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It was not uh, okay. Well, that, that's good enough. Damithun. He says, let's go back to the to the hadith in Arabic. Damithun laysa bil jafi, ولا المهين يعظم النعمة. وإن دقت لا يذم منها شيئا ولا يذم ذواقا ولا يمدحه ولا تغضبه الدنيا ولا ما كان لها فإذا تغطي الحق لم يعرفه أحد ولم يقم لغضبه شيء حتى ينتصر له صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم He would extol the blessing نعمة He would glorify it Peace of bread anything Glorify it. Your sight, glorify it. Allah gave you this ni'mah, be thankful for it. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would extol the ni'mah of Allah, the blessings of Allah. Huh? Anything, it's okay. That's ni'mah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Even if it was small, he says, he would extol it even if it was small. Huh? And he would not find fault with anything of it. Some of us. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I only want to have biryani, the nihari all the time, all the meat. Well, you eat the sauce. In the old days, they used to bring the, they dip the meat in the sauce and they take the meat away. They give it for the whole month. And you only, there's some meat in the sauce and that's, you eat bread with the sauce, that's it. Yeah. Don't see anything insignificant. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not see anything insignificant, no matter how small it is. Mm -hmm. And he would not find fault in it. And he, as long as it is edible, he would eat, alhamdulillah. Oh no, I don't like this food. Uh, bismillah, akhi. There are some people who don't have any food. Okay. To eat, bismillah. He would not find fault in it. Yeah, you go to your wife, and every time you complain about your food, oh, why is this time you don't, you don't know how to cook? You know what she's gonna do next time? She's gonna dump a whole pound of salt in your food. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. She's gonna be appreciative. Appreciate what they do. Yeah, when they keep telling her, you don't, you don't, don't know how to do it. She's gonna really do it, don't you? She's gonna smile at you without you knowing. That can be always done. Alhamdulillah. Now. He would not find fault with anything of it. But he would neither find fault with a, any taste of food or drink. Huh? He would not be angered by this world. Nothing in this world makes him angry. Because when you are in dhikr, when you are in constant dhikr of Allah, when you are in the presence of Allah, what happens in the dunya? Who cares? You're already in the akhirah. You're not in the dunya anymore. Your body may be in the dunya. Like if you're not, you are with Allah. What happens? The dunya goes up, down. Who cares? You know, you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, say now, Abu Jalani radiallahu ta'ala, you already know. He said in his munajat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He who found you found everything. And he who doesn't know you, even if he finds everything, he lost everything. If you found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you found Him, Allah. you don't need anything but there was everything else. Like if you have the whole dunya and you did not find Allah, you're lost. That's the meaning of the kalam of Sayyidina Abdul Okay. The nothing in this world would anger Him, nor by that which belongs to it. For nothing what belongs into this world. If the truth were overstepped, nothing would arouse his anger until he came to its aid. Yeah, nothing would stop him. If the truth is bent, nothing would stop him until he comes to the aid of the truth. 
because the haqq needs Rasulullah now to, to, to come to it and need it, huh? He would not be angry for the sake of his own retribution. His own self, no. Nor would he come to its aid. If someone does something to him, he would not be angry at his own retribution. He does not get angry for his own self, nor does he seek the aid to make his own self victorious. Huh? Yeah, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha in the hadith, she says, hadith is, is inshallah, okay, I mean, the sign is not that strong, like inshallah, whoever makes dua has already gotten, if, he's, if you, someone oppressed you or done something wrong to you, and you make dua against him, you've already got your, uh, your reward, your share. But if he say, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakeel, Allah has enough for me. He sees, Allah has enough for us. I don't have to worry about it. Then Allah will take care of that for you. Huh? Look, and if you want to do your own way, then you get your own right with your own, with your own muscles. Huh? Now can you leave it? Allah knows. Allah is just. Allah knows everything. Leave it for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not would not come to the aid of his self sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam إِذَا أَشَارَ أَشَارَ بِكَفِّهِ كُلِّهَا وَإِذَا تَعَجَّبَ قَلَبَهَا وَإِذَا تَحَدَّثَ اتَّصَلَ بِهَا فَيَضْرُبُ فَيَضْرِبُ بِبَاطِنِ رَاحَتِهِ الْيُمْنَى بَاطِنَ إِبْهَامِهِ الْيُسْرَى Like this وَإِذَا غَضِبَ أَعْرَضَ وَأَشَاحَ Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam He says uh, When The Ida ashar When he beckoned When he pointed He pointed with his whole With, his, with the whole of the palm of his hand He does He points with the palm of his hand and when he was astonished, he would turn it over. And he, he turns his head like this when he's astonished at something. Subhanallah. So now when you turn that, remember the sunnah of Rasulullah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When you're astonished at something, you turn your hand. Remember your beloved. Oh, that's how he used to do it. Huh? As he turns his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi And when he spoke, his speech was in harmony, or he actually missed something here in the, in the, that he said in the translation, the brother who translated, I believe he missed something here, he said, uh, So he would do like this sometimes, huh? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If when he talks, then he said, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam, his speech was in harmony with its movement. Oh, okay. So his speech was coherent, basically, obviously. He struck sometimes, grabbed with the palm of his right hand inside the part of the thumb of his left hand. So he did not miss it. You see that. Huh? When he was angry, he turned away and averted his face. And Nabi Sallallahu does not have double face. He's angered. Huh? If he's angered with you, he turned his face away from you. He's not going to come and oh, tell you and then something. No, no. Nowadays, you see people that... Oh, we say two faces, that's very nice. That's in the old days. Now ten faces. Fifteen faces. Two faces is discount. Why Why this sinifat one? And Nabi Sallallahu You can see the anger in his, in his face Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He turns his face. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He turned away and averted his face. And when he was happy, he lowered his gaze. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. La ilaha Now, إذا غضب عرض وشاح وإذا فرح غضب رفع. If he's pleased, he lowers his gaze. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
then he said نعم جل ضحكه التبسم most of his laughter was smiling he laughed laugh his laughter mostly was smiling صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم جل ضحكه التبسم ويفتقر عن مثل حب الغمام flashing his teeth like the hail, the beautiful pearls, the hail that is light and white that comes from the sky. Oh. If he smiles, you see his honorable teeth shining are like the hail that comes from the sky or like the shining pearls that you see. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala الحسن الإمام الحسن سبوز الإمام الحسين يسد فكتمتها الحسين زمانا I hid this from the Hussein this description I hid it from the Hussein for a while he said supposedly again keep that in mind keep in mind the supposed أيوة نعم الله 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 I concealed it from the Hussein for some time he said ثم حدثته. then one time I told him. let me tell you. قال الحسن. قال فوجدته قد سبقني إليه. I found that he had beaten me to it. he already knows it. I'm trying to hide it from him. it seems like he already knows it. I didn't hide anything from him. now. الله الله. فسأل فسأله عما سألته عنه وجدته قد سأل أباه. So I asked him about things and I found that he had asked his father. يعني أن الإمام الإمام الحسين asked his father. الإمام أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب كرم الله وجهه. قال قد سأل أباه عن مدخل مدخله مدخله ومجلسه مدخله ومجلسه ومخرجه وشكله فلم يدع منه شيء. قال الحسين. Now we go to the Hussein. قال الحسين سألت أبي عن دخول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. Now he therefore asked him about what he had asked him about, and he found that he had already asked his father, يعني سيد سيدنا علي, about his entrance and his exit, his outward appearance. So he did not leave anything out of it. And Hussein said, I asked my father about the entry of the Allah, Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. So he said, and now Ali supposedly is describing, he said, كان دخوله لنفسه مأذونا له في ذلك فكان إذا أوى إلى منزله جزأ نفسه دخول دخوله ثلاثة أجزاء جزء لله وجزء لأهله وجزء لنفسه ثم جزء جزاه بينه وبين الناس فيرد ذلك على العامة بالخاصة فلا يدخر عنهم شيئا صلى الله عليه وسلم When God's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم When the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم كئهم betook himself to his residence he divided his entry into three sections a section for Allah's sake and a section for his family's sake so even when he goes we say outside in the masjid he's always with Allah yeah but still when he goes home one part of his time is for Allah only huh? and don't turn your homes into graveyards huh? any people are made there now there's nobody Everybody sleeping all the time. No? Turn your homes into places of dhikr and ibadah. Subhanallah. Huh? Subhanallah. Now, hadith is Sahih Muslim. You all know hadith. Some other time we talk about the hadith. Like the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would, would divide his time in his house onto three. First part is Allah. 
he gives Allah's part, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then his family's sake, he gives a time for his family, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You all know the hadith, sahih hadith, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli, wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best of you are those who are best to their families, and I am the best to my family. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he divided his section, so number one for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then for his family, then his time, but his time he divided his, his between him and the people. Even then, between him and the people. So he was assigning that in particular to the common folk, people who are common, and he was not keeping anything from them. Yeah, anything they want, he gives them, he teaches them, he feeds them. Everything they want, he gives them to the common people. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His conduct in this section of the ummah included the preference for the people with excellent merits. This is who is favored to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who have the best of akhlaq, the most excellent of merits. With his permission, and its allotment according to the value of their excellent merits in the religion. For among them was the one who was burdened with one need. And among them was the one who was burdened with two needs. And among them there was the one who was burdened with multiple <coughs> needs. He would give them time accordingly. You have one issue, he takes. If you have two, three issues, People who have multi, everyone he gives him, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Now, he said then, he would therefore preoccupy himself with them and preoccupy them with what benefit them and the ummah. So look at how great the statement is. He would occupy himself with them but listen, he preoccupies them with what benefits them and the ummah. He does not preoccupy them in, in signif insignificant issues. That is, they're never going to be asked about it in the Day of Judgment. It's not going to benefit them. It's not going to be benefit the ummah. He doesn't preoccupy them in trivia. He occupies them in, in what's beneficial, you know. And there are people nowadays, you know, their sole, their sole interest is occupying the ummah in what there is no benefit and they will never be asked about in the grave. But they leave the things they're asked about in the grave. So, you know, one time, say, this mentality of people has always existed. One time a man came to, you know, from the people who do not, do not like Sayyidina Ali much. So he wants to challenge him. He says, so you claim you know what? You know everything? He says, yeah. Ask me before you lose me, Sayyidina Ali used to say. So he says, uh, tell me, uh, who's the one who shaved the head of Adam in Hajj? When Adam came and did Hajj, who shaved or did shave his head? You know, you know, when you do Hajj, you have to shave your head. He says, so who did that to Adam? What, are you going to ask about this in the grave? Someone, will Allah ask you, who shaved the head of Adam when he did Hajj? No. no. But this is the same, same kind of people, huh? So Sayyidina told him, Jibreel, go. Jibreel, <laughs> change. So he didn't know. He says, uh, how many, tell me, do you, how many hairs do you have in your head? Or in your beard? He says, there are many hairs, they're all cursing you. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, no. Huh? I mean, implicitly, tell, you're wasting the time of the ummah, wasting my time. Huh? And what? what? And to occupy yourself and occupy, learn from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not occupy yourself or others and the ummah with things that they will never be asked about in the day of judgment. Be busy in what makes you, improves you, makes you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He said, Naam, 
he says he would ف منهم ذو الحاجة ومنهم ذو الحاجتين ومنهم ذو الحوائج فيتشاغل بهم فيما أصلحهم والأمة عن مسألة وإخبارهم بالذي ينبغي لهم he teaches them what's beneficial for them and for the ummah and including questioning them about it and informing them of what would be appropriate for them to learn to make them closer to Allah not every knowledge is beneficial not every knowledge is beneficial no ويقول ليبلغ الشاهد الغائب وأبلغوني حاجة من لا يستطيع إبلاغها إياي فإنه من أبلغ سلطانا حاجة من لا يستطيع إبلاغها إياه ثبت الله قدميه يوم القيامة لا يذكر عنده إلا ذاك الله He says he would say let the one of you who is present inform the absentee hmm? and notify me of the need of someone who's incapable of notification. Not that he would only attend to the needs of the people that come, but he tells them, notify me of the needs of those who are incapable of coming and notifying me. Look at that. For if someone notifies the leader of the need of someone who's incapable of its notification, Allah will affirm his feet and establish his feet firmly on the day of the resurrection. Now he wants to make the ummah a body. You feel you don't want to extend your feet so the others trip over your foot. No, no. You want to aid. If your finger, the ummah is like a body. If your finger gets injured, you don't cut it. If your finger has a wound, has pus, has ugly things coming out of it, you don't cut it, you treat it. <coughs> it's still part of you. For if someone notifies the leader of the needs of someone who is not capacitated of its notification, Allah will establish his feet firmly on the day of the resurrection. Your feet will be, because you're helping the rest of the people. Your concern is not only your concern, your concern is the rest of the ummah. Huh? Of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even if you, especially if you disagree and you don't like them. And that's your concern. Now, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَا يَقْبَلُ لَا يُذْكَرُ عَنْ إِنَّهُ إِلَى ذَاتِ Nothing but that will be mentioned in his presence. And it will not be accepted from anyone other than him. Nothing other than that. Nothing other than benefit will be accepted. Nothing other than benefit will be mentioned. He will not waste his time and your time with talking about trivia. You know how many hairs in Adam's beard? Who is this? Do what, do what you're going to be asked in the day of judgment. In the qabr. That's what you should be concerned with. That's your salvation. Huh? Allah. Allah. is not only notice this we're looking about his looks and his character Allah. so you can emulate so, so then the image of Rasulullah so Allah, will come into you so into you into you into you know that in you fikum you can say amongst you that's the Sahaba, Allah is telling them, which means no amongst you is Rasulullah. Realize that. And you know, from the Ishara, if we can say though, the Ishara, the, Suf the Sufis have Ishara, you know that. Sign. Understand. 
Alamu, no, fikum means amongst you, and fi also means in. Know that in you is Rasulullah. And you bring, in other words, if I may take the ishara, I'm not saying this is tafsir, huh? No, from my pocket. You can take it and throw it against the wall, no problem. I have no ego with that. But I can take these characters and put it in you. So in you is Rasulullah. <laughs> So then you do fana, you becomes removed and replaced by the characters of Rasulullah So no more you is Rasulullah there. That's how the awliya become awliya. Uh, no, no big secret. I didn't give you any secret. You already already know that. So this is the path. Bismillah. Change and replace your nature with the Muhammadan nature. Your zulumat with the Muhammadan nur. Huh? Yeah, dhulmat. Turn the light off, the dhulmat will escape. Every night, you know when you go to your house in the dark in the night, it's dark. You turn the light off, what happens to darkness? Runs away. The minute you turn the light off, darkness comes right back. That's how it is. Turn the light off, on, and see how the darkness runs away. But keep the light always on. Otherwise, you'll go back to darkness again. Now. <clears throat> يدخلون روادا he says يدخلون روادا ولا يفترقون إلا عن دواء ويخرجون ذل صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم he says they will enter as seekers and they will not separate except on the strength of an intuition and they will emerge as guides to goodness look at that look at this characters they enter as seekers. And they don't, you know how some people go now. They already have the question. And they have 17 different versions of the answer. Sheikh, Mawlana Sahib, what is your opinion on this? He already has the answer. So, anyways, so Sheikh tells him the answer. He says, but no, this is not how. Now he wants to show himself, I'm a big Sheikh, I'm a scholar, I know. But this is not how it is here, this is not how it is. Look at it. So if you know the answer, why are you asking me? I don't tell you how much, Allah, if you're Abu Hanifa of this time, why are you asking the little one? You are the big man. Huh? Waste time. Again, contrary to the Sunnah, in things that are not beneficial to you or the Ummah. If a million people come and tell you you have your anyway. They come as seekers, they don't come as I know. No, they seek knowledge. Therefore, those people who come with that intention, they come out what? Guides to the Ummah. Because they come with the intention of actually sincerely seeking knowledge. They don't come with the intention of how can I learn something other people don't, so I make them feel stupid. They come of the intention to be beneficial to the Ummah, not so they can teach to be beneficial, not so they can teach to be superior. Notice? So you can teach to be beneficial for you first and for your community second, or you can learn so you can make yourself feel superior. But superiority only knows known by Allah to Allah. Nobody knows who's superior. You would lose on it. They come out as what? Seekers, he said. صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم قال فسألته عن مخرجه كيف كان يصنع فيه الحسين said I asked him about his and Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم's exit how was his demeanor in public يعني when he goes out in public how was his demeanor صلى الله عليه وسلم he said يخزن لسانه إلا مما يعنيهم ويؤلفهم ولا يفرقهم أو قال أو ينفرهم. Look at this. Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم used to withhold his tongue from speaking except about that which concerned him. Withhold his tongue. He himself. He himself. سيد الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه. You know, سيد نوبكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه الله. He used to put a pebble, a little stone, on his tongue, and he would walk. Days. Whenever he's walking in public, he puts 
And he put it, don't, don't do that. Maybe you know, I don't want you to swallow it. Then you come, say, Sheikh told me to do this. <laughs> or, you know, no. Uh, when they asked me, Abu Bakr, why are you putting this? He says, I'm keeping my tongue down. Now, this is the one who took me, destroyed me. This is the one who would destroy people. So I make sure that they can't speak. Huh? So his thicker was Qalbi, I guess, then, right? <laughs> His tongue is not moving, but his heart is moving. Allah. Important is your heart moves, not your tongue. Your tongue sometimes moves in the wrong direction. It sings a different frequency. Huh? 103 FM. We want you to be with La ilaha illallah frequency. Allah. Uh, that's the problem. Your tongue wants to take you right and left. Some people have three, four tongues at the same time. You want to have... Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar would put a little pebble on his tongue and he would walk they said yeah okay, why are you do doing this he said al-mahalik." he holds his tongue he says this is the one that destroys people Allah. where did he learn this because the Nabi was what he would he would withhold his tongue look at this would hold his tongue from speaking except about that which concerned him some people don't speak about everything he used to socialize with them and he would not alienate them. There was no distance. Huh? Yeah, you know Auntie Rogers? Oh no, assistant chief and the assistant chief has another assistant. And the other assistant, then before you get to Maulana, you have to go through 17 different people and you never get to him. Huh? No, first, what do you want? And then, you know, all these titles, Mawlana, Hujjatul Islam, Mujanab, Shaykhul Islam, Shaykhul Muslimin, all these big, big, big titles, we never ever get to the, we want to. Bismillah. Ya Aba Bakr, Sahaba Yishu, Ya Aba Bakr, Khalas, that's it. It's the love is in the heart. Huh? And all these titles and all these things, I was telling the brothers yesterday, if you call nowadays shiuch, maybe may Allah not make me, I'm not talking about anybody, huh? maybe I'm talking about myself. If you call them with their first name or with their nickname, and my nickname Abu Yahya, for example. If you call some of them, maybe some of the Buris will make you shish kebab, right? Away. <laughs> and they throw you on the grill, why, how dare you calling the Sheikh with his first name? You gotta call Janab. Respect is important. I cannot, let's not make rituals. ليس منا من لم يقر يرحم صغيرا ويقول كبيرا حديث الترمذي صحيح ها لكن also there's that there's that notion accessibility of a Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم to every single one the lowest the most I shouldn't say the lowest I apologize sorry I'll stop for a while the least knowledgeable and the most knowledgeable the better one who doesn't know anything and Abu Bakr Siddiq both of them and the reason is accessible, accessible to them they go they speak to him no problem Allah. no problem anytime any day anything his door is open and his smile is like this and he listens to everybody sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there's no protocol he used to socialize with them and they don't feel any you know there's he didn't make a, this up, uh, uh, inflammatory or uh, official, you know, art, artificial distance. And he would not alienate them. He would honor the noble man of every group and designate him as their chief. Yeah, he says here, actually, Actually, the, he missed also a translation, I believe, here. He would socialize with them. يُؤَلِّفُهُمْ <coughs> No. He would hold his tongue from things that are not beneficial to them. Concerning to them. وَيُؤَلِّفُهُمْ وَلَا يُفَرِّقُهُمْ He would try to unify them, not divide them. People are people. People have different backgrounds. Different knowledge, different level, different rank, different spirituality, different attachment. 
And Nabi Sallallahu was not, his concern was not to divide his ummah that still calls on him and believes with him. No, no. His concern was to unite them. You alifuhum, ta'lif means bringing them together, even if they're distant, not to divide them together. He used to honor every honorable person in every tribe, and he would make him the chief on his tribe. Third, his tribe likes him, they're his chief. And then he would warn people. He would caution the people and be wary of the evil people among them without concealing his good humor and his natural disposition from anyone among them. He would look after his companions. And what does that mean? Somebody doesn't show up. Somebody doesn't come. Somebody missed the salah. Somebody was sick. He's after him. What is wrong? How can we help you? What is this? And he would ask the people about what is affecting them. He's concerned about the people. وَيُحَسِّنُ الْحَسَنَ وَيُقَوِّيهِ وَيُقَبِّحُ الْقَبِيحَ وَيُوَهِّنَ He would uh, present the beautiful in, its, in a favorable light and strengthen it and he would make the ugly repulsive and weaken it. مُعْتَدِلُ الْأَمْرُ غَيْرُ مُخْتَلِفٍ لَا يَغْفَلُ مَخَافَةَ أَنْ يَغْفَلُوا وَيَمِيلُوا لِكُلِّ حَالٍ عِنْدَهُ عَتَادٌ لَا يُقَصْرُ عَنْ حَقٍ ولا يجوزه الذين يلونهم الذين يجوزه الذين يلونهم الناس خيارهم أفضلهم عند أعمهم نصيحة وأعظمهم عنده منزلة أحسنهم مواساة ومؤازعة. he says he was equitable not argumentative. doesn't argue. you know some people argue just for the sake of argument. نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم was not argument. he would not be neglectful. For fear they might be neglect, neglect, negligent or they might be absent. For every situation there was a means at his disposal. He would not fall short of the truth and he would not overstep it. Those of the people who followed him were the best among them, the most meritorious. Among them, in his opinion, was the one who most embraced his sincere advice. The greatest among them in status, in his opinion, was the finest of them in consolation and support. Those people who are more in consolation of support of the Ummah, the people who are more concerned of the Ummah, those who are closest to him are those who are best contributors, contributors <coughs> to the benefit of the Ummah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wa Alayhi Wa Sallam You tell me when I need to stop فَسَأَلْتُهُ عَنْ مَجْلِسِهِ Then I asked him about his session when he sits and he with his companions and in his session He said فَقَالْ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لا يجلس ولا يقوم إلا على ذكر الله and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would neither stand up or sit down without the remembrance of Allah. لا يوطن الأماكن وينها عن إيطانها وإذا انتهى إلى قوم جلس حيث ينتهي به المجلس ويأمر بذلك ويعطي كل جلسائه بنصيبه لا يحسب جليسه أن أحدا أكرم عليه منه من جلسه أو قاومه في حاجة صابره حتى يكون هو المنصرف ومن سأله حاجة لم يرده إلا بها أو بميسور من القول قد وسع الناس منه بسطه وخلقه فصار لهم أبا وصاروا عنده في الحق سواء صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم He said when he eventually joined a group of people, he would sit where the session would be. No, he would sit wherever he gets. 
Wherever he, he, he enters, that's where he would sit, at the end of the majlis. When he would command that as well, to tell to his, his companions. He would give each of his sitting companions his share of participation, and his sitting companion would not consider anyone dearer to him than his own self. Because he's giving his whole attention, he would think he's the only one and the most one that is important to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If someone sat with him or conferred with him about a need, he would bear with him patiently. So that he would be the one to take leave of him until that person leaves. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not leave him. If someone asked him for something, he would be, if someone asked him for something he needed, he would not send him away except with it or with some practi practical advice. His uh, demeanor was good, obvious, good nature, and he had encompassed the people so that, so that he became like a father for them. He became like a father for them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's like the father of this ummah. He is. He's like the father of this ummah. Huh? That's why his wives are the mothers of the ummah. Why do you think we call, for example, Sayyidah Aisha, Sayyidah Khadija, Ummul Mu'mineen? Because Abu Mu'mineen, the father of the Mu'mineen is him, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, as what you hope, Ummah to him. Their wives are his, their, their mothers. Now, because he's our father, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that sense, and for those are also in a specific sense. Now, and they became truly equal to him in his presence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They felt equality. His session was one of knowledge, understanding, modesty, trust, and patience. His session were always like that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. مجلسه مجلس حلم وحياء وصبر وأمانة لا ترفع فيه الأصوات ولا تؤبن فيه الحرم ولا تثنى فلتاته متعاذرين يتفاضلون فيه بالتقوى متواضعين يوقرون الكبير ويرحمون الصغير ويؤثرون ذوي الحاجة ويحفظون الغريب Voices in his majlis were not raised People did not raise voices in his majlis. Sanctities were not violated in it. People did not violate other people's rights who were not present in it. Any other things were not violated in his majlis, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It lapses where its lapses were not repeated. If somebody lapsed, that was it. That was the last time they lapsed. They learned. They were on par with one another. They all were on par. They were all equal. Whether they were rich, poor, black, white, yellow, I don't know, whatever it is, they're all the same. Arab, non-Arab is everyone. Everyone they were on par with one another, but they used to contend with one another in the session for superiority in piety. <laughs> Behaving humbly and modesty. That was their competition. They used to revere the elder in the session. And they, and in it, they would treat the junior with mercy and compassion. They used to give preference to the needy, and they would take good care of the stranger. This was the majlis of Rasulullah. Do we still have more time? 20 more minutes, so we finish the hadith, I think. And then after that, if anybody has questions, we will try to answer. <laughs> My father, كيف كانت سيرته في جلسائه؟ قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان دائما بشري سهل الخلق 
لين الجانب ليس بفض ولا غليظ ولا صخاب ولا فحاش ولا غياب ولا مداح يتغافل عما لا يشتهي ولا يؤنس منه ولا يعفو ولا يؤس ولا يؤس منه ولا يخيب فيه قد ترك نفسه من ثلاث المراء والاكثار المراء والمراء والاكثار ومما لا يعنيه وترك نفسه من ثلاث كان لا يذم احدا ولا يعيره ولا يطلب عورته ولا يتكلم الا فيما رجع ثوابه اذا تكلم اطرق جلساؤه كانما على رؤوسهم الطير صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم he said Allah is messenger كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى وسلم was always good humored. Always good humored. You hear no good humor from him, so what? Easy going. You sir. Mild mannered. Neither rude nor coarse. Nor loud. Nor obscene. Nor slanderous. Nor avaricious. Slandering others. He would not take interest in that which he did not desire, but he would not cause someone hoping for it to despair of it. He would not accept an invitation to it. He abstained from three matters contention, argumentation, and what did not concern him. Contention, you know this. Self-righteousness and intentions like that. Huh? And argumentation and what did not concern him. He had also relieved the people of three matters. He would not blame anyone. You know, we're easy to blame. Oh, the fault is this. Oh, it's their fault. It's this fault. No. Why is this happening? Because it's the media's fault. It's the... Uh, what, what are you doing about it? Other than complaining. Okay. He would not blame anyone. Oh, why are we like this? Oh, because they are the others. They have lots of money and they have, you know, mashallah, you know, they're supported. Oh, what are you doing, sir? What are you going to do today? That's the question. It's not about other people. What other people do, that's not important. What do you do is important. Now, he would not blame anyone. He would not find fault with anyone. Ya Allah. He looks at the good sides of people. He does not try to find faults in other people. And he would not invade people's privacy. Allah. Allah. The Sunnah of Rasulullah. He would not blame anyone. He would not find fault in modern people. And he would not invade their privacy. Yes. His speech was limited to which was to what was meritorious beneficial when he spoke his table companions bowed in silence i don't it's not really bowed sat his companions his table companions around him sat in silence as if birds were were on their heads وَإِذَا سَكَتَ تَكَلَّمُوا وَلَا يَتَنَازَعُونَ عِنْدَهُ مَنْ تَكَلَّمَ أَنْصَتُوا لَا حَتَّى يَفْرُغْ حَتَّى يَفْرُغْ حَدِيثُهُمْ عِنْدَهُمْ حَدِيثُ أَوَّلِيَتِهِمْ عِنْدَهُمْ حَدِيثُ أَوَّلِيَتِهِمْ يَضْحَكُ مِمَّا يَضْحَكُونَ مِنْ وَيَتَعْجَبُ مَا يَتَعْجَبُونَ مِنْ وَيَصْبِرُ لِلْغَرِيبِ عَلَى الْجَفْوَةِ مِنْ مَنْطِقِهِ وَمَسْأَلَتِهِ حتى إذا كان أصحابه ويقول إذا رأيتم طالب الحاجة يطلبها فأرشدوه ولا يقبل الثناء إلا من مكافئ ولا يقطع على أحد حديثه حتى يجوز فيقطعه بنهي أو قيام صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم He said he would not contest or they would not the companions not only they would they sit as if birds on their are on their hands but they would not contest with one another right with one another right to speak. Not two people want to speak at the same time. They would not contest their right to speak in his majlis, in his presence. And when someone spoke in his presence, they listened to him until he's finished. Their speech 
In his presence was the speech of the first of them. He would laugh about what they laughed about. And he marvels, or he would be astonished at what they were astonished at. He used to exercise patience with strangers due to the roughness of their manner of speech and inquiry. Even if his companions were keen on incorporating them, and he would say, if you see anyone in need, you must help them. He would not accept commendation except from someone moderate in praise. It's not about just throwing cheap praises like that. If they were, he doesn't want them. He wants them to mean what they say, not simply throw things like that. Huh? So if they do, they're genuine, then that's fine. He would not interrupt anyone's speech. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi would not interrupt anyone's speech. Unless he's transgressed, he transgressed the limit at which point he would interrupt him with a prohibition or standing up. The last portion of the hadith, قال قلت كيف كان سكوت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم How was the silence of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم How was how was he when he was silent He well he said he was silent on four things على على أربع على الحلم والحذر والتقدير والتفكر patience and caution and estimation and contemplation That's how he was Patience, you know, people talk, he's the patient. فَأَمَّا تَقْدِيرُهُ فَفِي النَّظَرِ His taqdeer is he listens to people. Active listening. You know, there's difference between hearing people and, act and actively listen to what they say. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was active listening. Now, وَأَمَّا تَذَكُّرُهُ وَتَفَكُّرُهُ فَفِيمَا يَبْقَى وَيَفْنَى His tafakkur, his thoughts, and things that will perish, and that, will, that which will never perish. People always value and they give their life for the sake of things that perish. And they forget about the one who never perishes. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam? وَجُمِعَ لَهُ الْحِلْمُ فِي الصَّبْرِ and he was given the beauty in patience. What do you mean beauty in patience? Some people's patience is not beautiful. Well. They may have patience. Some people don't have any patience. And some people have patience, but their patience is not beautiful. What does that mean? Yani you slander him. He's patient, but his heart is boiling. He wants to just jump your throat. Huh? Then he says, I'm not going to do it. Like a shuf al-anbiya, Sayyidina Ya'qub, what did he say? Fasabron. Jameel. <laughs> His sabr is Jameel. That's Yaqub. How about Sayyidul Anbiya? His sabr is Jameel. His sabr is Jameel. There's nothing, you know, Bismillah. His sabr is Jameel. Now, Jumi'a lahu al-hilmu fi al-sabr. Fakana la yusibuhu. Fakana la yubghidu. لا لا يبغضه شيء ولا يستفزه nothing provokes him you get provoked when you think when you value the perception of the other but if he doesn't know you need to teach him first وجمع له الحذر and he was given caution in four things أخذه بالحسن يقتدى به he does the right things calmly so people can follow does not do things too much so people can't follow catch up with him وتركه القبيح ليتنا ليتناهى عن and he leaves the abandons the ugly so people don't follow him and واجتهاده الرأي فيما أصلح أم أمته and he does the best for the construction of the well-being of the أمة والقيام فيما جمع لهم من أمر الدنيا والآخرة and he does the best thing for them which makes their dunya and akhirah best this was basically a summary of the Shama'il of Rasulullah Sallallahu I know, and obviously if we sit here for ages and years and decades and centuries and the whole dunya time, 
will never give Rasulullah sallallahu his due right. Or his due shama'il and haqq on us, because his haqq on us is beyond being described. But maybe this glimpse from the shama'il of Imam Tirmidhi, inshallah, will give us a, and shed some nur in our heart, so we can imbibe these characters, and we can live those characters, and we can emulate them, and we can bring them to our homes, so we little by little turn ourselves into Muhammadi rather than who we are. Because who we are needs lots of polishing. So we might as well follow the nur that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi 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 wa rahmat